Anybody else? Any others before we have an offering of prayer? Kitty's scheduled for the 19th of this month. Remember the ladies. Pray for a young people. Remember them. Talked to Sonia today. She said Jacob was a Doing good out to our school. That's good. It's a long ways off, but we're not near nice one. Four hours away. That's a long way for young and big on. Jake, she's going to try to talk to her every day. It's a long way. I thank you for your report yesterday when I went to ask for my uh, Yeah. Uh, you told me that you were good. Can you remember Claudine and Trey? They're getting older, more feeble. Just remember them. Can you pray? Remember Laura May. And remember Ann Smith. Pray for her. That's what I am today. I mean, call James. Check on her. He said she's doing good. They got her put in a place down there, a little place where she lives. I guess like sisters live in kind of place. He said she's doing good in there. Anybody else tonight? Larry and Shana Jenkins is a little boy. Little Isaac. Mm -hmm. He's uh, He had his first treatment last night for the hemangiomas that they found on his liver. And Shana said that he done really good and he got to come home today. I don't know how many of those treatments he's going to have to have. but I didn't know anything about that. Remember Gentry prayed for him. I think he's doing a little bit better, but he's still in. Pretty, uh, pretty rough spot. I don't really know how to say that. He's, <clears throat> he's been through a lot. I'll put it that way. He's been through a lot. Little Gentry has. Just pray for him. All that family. So much sickness in that family. Uh, I know his uncle had surgery, I think, the day before yesterday. Lady Miles. Remember them. Anybody else here tonight before we pray? I uh, remember Emma Beasley and her family. She was that boy that got in a uh, pretty bad truck wreck a while back, but thank goodness she was able to walk away from it with minor injuries. I know she was airlifted to Knoxville, but she was uh, she she didn't have any major complications. So. Yeah, I talked to Bobby the other day. He said she was doing good. Everybody at will, let's get around the altar tonight and go to the Lord and Christ. Lord, we pray, God, that your will be done in every heart, every life, and every situation. 
situation. God, I pray for this lost and dying world. I pray for our family, God. Lord, I pray you'd help us, Lord God, or to do your will. And God, that you would fill us, Lord, with that good spirit, God. Lord, we know God tonight. Oh, God, what's the truth, God? And we're thankful for truth. God, we just pray, Lord, that you would search us out. Lord, that you would place the same tonight. God, that he testify and it's done. God, might he bring glory and honor to your name. And God, if there's any preaching done, God, you'll have to do it. So, Lord, we're praying, God, that you should help with that. Father, we pray, God, that you should just have your way. Lord, we love you, thank you, praise you. God, we ask you all these things. Lord, tonight, in Jesus' name. God, Father, Lord, tonight, we thank you for your goodness, Lord, upon you again this day.
told Brother Richard Carpenter when pointed that out to me years ago. I don't hardly ever get around that song and it's sung that I don't notice there. Down at the bottom of the page, it says, and that's right here in your songbook, the last stanza or verse of this song was penciled on the wall of a narrow room of an asylum by a man said to have been demented. The profound lines were discovered after his death. So some fellow that they said was crazy had him locked up, no doubt, no padded room, in a crazy house and asylum. And there on his wall, he wrote these words. Could we with ink the ocean feel, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, oh, stretched from sky to sky. That's just always been pretty interesting to me. I've heard that song for years, and then Richard Turpin pointed that out to me one day. That's pretty neat, ain't it? Amen. 96. That's a good name. Yes, we do. Help us, Lord.
love this old song right here. Praise God, I'm glad I am. <laughs> Amen. I was up our grandma today and I was lamenting over a few things. We got picture albums out and just had a good time fellowship. Uh, same picture of grandpa in there. I started to just, you know, obey a little sad, miss my grandpa. Grandma, she said, well, that's all right, son. She said, she said, Jimmy tells us all the time we're going to get to see him again. <laughs> I said, I believe that too. I said, that's Amen. what I preach, man. Sometimes we just get a little sad when our people has gone down here because uh, you won't see them no more down here. I seen that little thing. Grandma had it. It was Kelsey's little birth announcement uh, when she was born. And last Thursday was uh, 13 years she'd been gone last Thursday. I didn't dwell on it much this year like I normally do. I tried to stay busy all day from early that morning until about midnight that night. And the Lord really helped me get through it this year. But I looked at that little birth announcement in that picture book. And about half of them people that was in that little birth, birth announcement's gone. <laughs> Grandparents and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they leave here fast, don't they? Yes. Yeah. Next Wednesday, man. Ten years is my I'm glad we have hope tonight. Amen. Thank God. Boy, it'd be a miserable life we didn't. I'll tell you what, before we say something, I got one of the best blessings I've had in a long time today. I know. I went to Walmart this morning to get some stuff, and I was back in the Dairy part there, and I've got my milk and stuff, and I come around to get some butter, and, and I reached over here to get something. And I must have a girl standing right here, and I turn around and my wrist over there. And she said, Gary! <laughs> so I say, We had a great time. Yeah, that was yeah, just such good. a blessing. First thing she went up, how's them girls? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we had a real good time. Amen. Well, I'm happy. I got something I want to say too. Uh, we have something we call hymns from Brody, and I mean it's, it's really just for us, but it's a comfort, and I believe the Lord sends it to us. But um, ever since, uh, well, when when Tanya lost Courtney, she had time to spend with Courtney. They knew Courtney was when she was dying, and they kind of talked. And Tanya said, "You're gonna have to give us some kind of." Sign, let us know you're okay. You know, just something they just kind of talked. And so they decided on red birds and, and, and hens. And then every day she'd see a red bird or a hen, yeah. she'd know that, that Courtney was okay and, and everything. Well, they was coming home from the hospital after she died, and the red bird did the hen <laughs> And I mean, it's just kind of been like that. And I was all sad. I was like, I didn't get that for you. I didn't have, we didn't get to do any of that. And somebody said, well, you have this Bible, and you've got comfort in this Bible. Well, I started finding hymns. I mean, it would just be in a very random, like, crazy place. I found them. Mother finds them. The other day at work, Clancy was going through, like, labeling stuff, and now in the bottom of the bowl was a hymn. It's just like we call them Brody hymns. But I, I was having a rough day today, and uh, I opened my lunchbox, and I had a Diet Pepsi. And a piece of pizza and a penny in my lunchbox. Just <laughs> just penny. And uh, I was just like, I mean, I just felt when it started crying, it's true. It's just, it was just, it's the comfort that I needed. But I was sitting with Tanya at lunch, I opened my lunchbox, I'm like, look here. She said, I got one today too. She said, I found me a penny today. Oh. So it's just, it's just a little thankful because penny's from heaven. It's just the Lord knows when we need a little extra boost when we're having a time. And it, it just makes, I mean, we've all experienced it. Was it Mother's, it was Mother's Day? And uh, how, what was it where we found? The one in the middle of the dining room floor. Just. And it's like, not like you find it change. It's like one hint. It's just like so significant. But it's just, it's just sweet. And I just thank the Lord for, for just the comfort that he gives when he knows you need it. And he sends you comfort.
Exodus chapter 14. Somebody sent me a verse on this this morning. I've been reading this chapter throughout the day and just pondering on it. Boy, it's just so wonderful. So thankful for this verse. 
verse. I'm going to read a couple verses tonight. Just talk a few minutes here about a few things. <clears throat> Boy, I'm certainly thankful for the Lord tonight. Yeah, amen. We sung that first friend, what a friend, or that first song, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> My goodness, I'm just praising God and thanking the Lord for that tonight. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Exodus chapter number 14. Starting in verse number 13, the Bible says this, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall Fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Yes. Praise God, he told them that their enemies, they wasn't going to see them no more. They wasn't going to have to worry about them no more. But he'd take care of them. He told them you ain't even going to have to do nothing. You ain't even going to have to fight. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'd say many times that probably our greatest problem is not standing still and letting God work. Just as out here, I get her to sing that song. <laughs> Father, Lord, as we bow before you, God, this evening, Lord, we thank you for, God, this opportunity, Lord, to be in your house, God, for the good singing. Lord, to testify, God, that's already took place here tonight. God, we praise you and give you glory. Lord, I thank you for the scripture that's been read. God, I thank you, Lord, for being a friend to us, God. Lord, taking such good care of us. Father, I pray, God, here for just a few moments of time. Lord, that you would help us, God, to set our affection, Lord, on things of us. God, I pray you'd encourage your people here tonight. Fill them, God, with your spirit, Lord. God, I pray, Father, that you would, God, strengthen us, God, and encourage us tonight and remind us, oh God, of who you are and who, God, we serve. Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you would help us, Lord, to see, God, what you would have us to see tonight in this scripture. Lord, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I want to back up and just look at the first part of the chapter here this evening. And we'll focus on these verses. But prior to this, the children of Israel, they have been, they have come out of, they have come out of Egypt. They were in slavery. They were in bondage. And finally, after many plagues, and finally after the death of the Pharaoh's son, he finally said, just go ahead and get out of here. And, and Moses leads God's children, the Hebrew children. He leads them out of bondage and leads them out of Egypt. And they begin to go through the wilderness. And the Bible teaches us that they came to see. And God spoke to Moses, the man of God. And he said, just set up camp over there next to the sea. I'm about to do something. I'm about to show y'all something. And the Bible teaches us that Moses spake to the children of Israel and they done exactly what he told them to do, that they set up camp. I'm certain that they were worried uh, because the enemy was coming behind them. Hey man, God had hardened Pharaoh's heart and he began to pursue after them and chase after them. And I'm certain in the distance they could see them coming. And God, he took his glorious cloud that was leading the children of Israel that was out in front of them when they set up the camp there by the sea. God took that glorious cloud and he moved it behind the children of God and he stood between them and their enemies. And this glorious cloud, hey, it, it confounded the enemy. They couldn't see the children of Israel. And then God, he spoke uh, to, to, to Moses, his man, one more time because here, standing at the Red Sea, the people begin to say, what are we going to do? Are we going to die? How are we going to make it? We're up against the wall. Uh, the enemy's behind us. We would have been better off. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? Why didn't you just leave us where we was at? We'd have been better off where we was at than to be killed out here 
in the wilderness. And God spoke to Moses and he told him, he said, you get up there and you stretch out the rod of God over the sea. He said, I'm going to show you something. And the Bible teaches that the man of God praised God, done what God told him to do. And the Bible teaches that when he stretched forth that rod, Brother Gary, that the Lord sent a strong east wind, praise God. And the Bible said that it blowed all night. And praise God, it pushed the waters back. And the Bible said that the wind blowed so hard that it dried up the ground. And that next morning, the children of Israel, they began to march across the Red Sea. Praise God, they marched across on dry ground. And the Bible teaches how that when they got across and they were saved, they find that God spoke to the man of God. And here came the enemy. They began to enter in, amen, into the same dry ground that the children of Israel had just walked upon. But this time, God let that water start seeping back in because their chariot wheels began to get stuck. And the chariot wheels began to come off. And there they were, caught out in the middle of this great sea, the Red Sea, and walls of water on either side. They had just watched the children of Israel walk safely through. They had watched them walk through on dry ground. And now, as Moses stretches back forth the rod, the Bible teaches that the water comes crashing in on the enemy. Praise God. And God took care of his children just like he said he would. Yes. But I want you to notice something in verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Two things that we've got to do if we want God to work and move. First, we've got to not be afraid. So many times in this life I'm afraid that we're overcome with fear. And he told them, he said, don't you worry about me. We've got to remember who our God is. Amen. We've got to remember who we're serving. And he also said, stand still. In that we know that he was saying, I don't want you to do anything. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to work in this situation. He clearly told them this. If you want to go home and read this chapter, he said, I, I'm going to prove, I, I'm going to show them who I am. He said, Fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God was going to save them. He said, Which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, praise God, every time I read this, it gets me stirred up. Whom you have seen today, you shall see them again, no more, forever. God knows how to take care of our enemies. This is not simply Old Testament scripture. The Bible plainly teaches us in the New Testament. I believe it's in the book of Peter. I can't quote the chapter and verse right now. But it tells us that he knows how to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. If you're a child of God, God makes a promise in his word that he'll take care of anybody that troubles you. Amen. But sometimes we don't do what God teaches us to do. Sometimes we don't stand still. Right. Sometimes we don't wait on God. Sometimes we try to fix things, do things ourselves. <laughs> Sometimes we try to get ahead of God. They had to fear not. They had to stand still. They had to wait on God to move. And God done exactly what he said he would do. Verse 14, I love it. You ought to highlight it. You ought to mark it in your Bible. Write it on your hand. Put it in your memory bank. Commit it to memory. Shout praise God on it. The Bible says the Lord shall fight for you. Praise God. And ye shall hold your peace. God will take care of his children. I promise you tonight. We serve, how many here tonight thinks we serve the same God that 
that parted the Red Sea. Amen. God ain't changed one man. That's right. He's still on the throne. It don't no matter who's in the office. It don't no matter how much wickedness is in the land. What the governments are doing. How evil men are. God's still on the throne. Nothing's changed, praise God. He's God Almighty. He can do anything He wants to do. And I promise you here uh, this evening that God cares for his children. God cares for me and you. We are the sheep of his pasture tonight. We are his little flock. I praise him tonight. I know he's going to take care of me. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Ain't that reassuring? Amen. Praise Amen. God. I thank God for that. What a promise. Now Amen. I want you the Bible reads on down and he done, he done exactly what he said he was going to do. You can read this when you get home. I preached it to you just a minute ago. But I want you to know this this in verse number 30. The Bible said, I'm going to show you another verse. No, I ain't going to look at that. Verse number 30. The Bible says, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Praise God. We have a Bible full of accounts full of stories, and this Bible's truth, but I'm telling you, people don't really preach it like it's truth anymore. I mean, people, they, they preach and teach it like, well, it's a, it's a good way to live, and it's, you know, there's some good ideas in here, but this is truth, amen. These things really happen, and we have these things unto us for examples. We can look unto them. We can praise God tonight. Praise God He nearly parted the Red Sea. Praise God He brought His children forth across on dry ground. Praise God He grounded their enemies. Amen. And they didn't have to deal with them anymore. But just like life, they faced new enemies. They had new battles. They run into new obstacles, but as long as they feared not and let God work, He brought them through that too. Amen. Every time a child of God gets in trouble is when they disobey God or they try to do things on their own or their own way. But I promise you, every time a child of God stands firm on God's Word and stands firm for God, read through the book, God takes care of them, and praise God, I'm counting and I can, He's going to take care of me and you too. Amen. I was reminded today, you don't have to look any further than the book of Daniel for great encouragement in the Lord tonight. I was reminded today in Daniel chapter number 3 and pondering on these things about them three little boys, them three young men they were, they were believed to be between the ages of 12 and 16 years old whenever they were, whenever this happened and the fiery furnace happened and they were carried away into Babylon and they were taken into captivity. But these three young men, out of everybody else, out of everybody else, refused to go along with what the world was doing. These three young men established their hearts and established their minds. And they said, we're going to trust in God. We're going to do what God's told us to do. And we're going to follow God. These three young men, praise God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'll tell you what, it got them in trouble. The Bible teaches us that they were cast into the hottest furnace in the land. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, you crank her up seven times hotter than she's ever been before. You get it just as hot as you can get that old furnace down there. And we're going to show these boys that they're going to learn the lesson. They're going to learn to conform and they're going to learn to go along with things. The Bible teaches us, praise God, that those men that came and bound them hand and foot and carried them over there to cast them into that furnace. 
That always amazes me. But the men that cast them in died because of the heat, not even in the flames, but the heat was so hot that those men were slain. But we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three young men who trusted in God, who refused to comply with what the world was doing, and went along with God, and praise God they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, and they wouldn't break. Praise God they didn't burn either, amen. They were cast into that furnace. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar walked over there and he looked off in there. He said, didn't we cast three in there? He said, Brother Gary, I see more. He said, that fourth one is like unto the Son of God. Praise God. God will fight your battles for you. They come out of that fiery furnace without even the smell of smoke on them. The only thing that happened is they got loosed in there, praise God. Them bands that they had them bound with. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. They were burned off. It was in the fire that they got loose. Sometimes we've got to go through the fiery trials of this life to truly be free in God. Sometimes it's these things that looses us and brings us closer to God. But God will fight your battles if you'll stand with Him. Amen. Amen. In Daniel chapter 6, I thought about God will fight our battles and protect us from man. I don't know why I've had this on my heart so much here lately, but I shared it with you the other day. I've been praying, God, help me not to neither fear man nor beast. God will protect us from man. He'll protect us from beast too. A similar situation with another king and a great man of God, Daniel. And they, they was going to try to trick him and set him up. They said, well, we'll put him in the den of lions. Oh, Daniel, he never quit praying. He kept praying, kept talking to God. And the Bible teaches us that they went back, they went to the king, the king was tricked, Daniel was set up, the king hated he done it, but he was going to stick to his word. He said, go get Daniel and we'll put him in the den of lions. The Bible teaches us that they put him in there. The old king was so worried about what had happened, how he was tricked and what went on. The Bible teaches that he went back to his palace, he paced back and forth all night, he didn't sleep a wink. He didn't need a bite. Early the next morning he went out. He had his ear over there towards the den of lions. He cried out to Daniel and praised God. There was a voice that came back from the den of lions. And it was the voice of Daniel. Praise God. He is just fine. He'd been in there all night. Oh, them old lions. But praise God, no harm was done to him. Why? Because God fought for him, amen. God kept the lines at bay all night. They couldn't harm him. They couldn't hurt him. They couldn't do anything against him. God will fight our battles. If you're a child of God, he'll take care of you. He'll fight for you. And amen. praise God, you can have peace in it, amen. amen. And then they took him old fellows that tricked down and tricked the king. You think, you think there wasn't no lines in that den? Well, the Bible don't say a lion's den. The Bible says a den of lions. That means it was a den with lions in it. A den of lions. And they took those men that tricked Daniel, set him up, tricked the king, and they took those men, their families, and they cast them into that same den. The Bible teaches us that it didn't turn out so good for them. God wasn't with them. God wasn't fighting for them. God didn't keep the beasts at bay for them. Well, I tell you what, it's a dangerous thing to come against a child of God. I really believe that tonight. I believe that with all my heart. We don't hear stuff like this preached and taught that much anymore. But you know, when I was young, we were taught to respect God's men and God's people. And, and there's reasons for that. Because we see in this book, when people come against them, it don't turn out so good for them. But praise God, he'll take care of his children. <laughs> Ain't that wonderful? 
I tell you what, I can shout on that tonight. I can go home. I can sleep good on that tonight. I can get up and sing in the choir on that. Hey, man, I can praise God here tonight. He will fight for you. He'll take care of you. Stand still tonight and see the salvation of the Lord. God's going to take care of us tonight, church. I praise Him, amen. Has anybody got anything on their heart? Anybody with anything on their heart? Anybody else? There's a meeting going on at Mike James tomorrow night at the church, I guess, where, let me look at it, that way I don't tell it wrong. <clears throat> it's an evangelism explosion planning meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. at Steve McCoy Baptist Church. He said, I hope that someone at least can come from the church. The actual evangelism explosion meeting training day will be October 22nd. But participants need to sign up for the event. One way to sign up is to go to siphon, siphonline.org. But he said contact him with any questions. And he'd really like for somebody to come and take part in this. Uh, tomorrow night it's more or less just a meet to see how many people are interested. But uh, it's a thing where they're going to have a thing on October 22nd. And there's going to be training. And it's going to be about... Uh, Learning to evangelize, learning to be a good witness, you know. Everybody here that's saved tonight, you can be a witness for the Lord. You can win somebody to God. You you can be a mouthpiece for God. Everybody here that's saved. And I believe that the church really, really fails in that department. I believe it falls short. I seen a, a clip of Adrian Rogers preaching today. I think I shared it a while back on Facebook talking about how most people in the church never win anybody to the Lord. And uh, evangelism is something that's very important that I feel like that we do very little of. That's trying to win people to the Lord, trying to get into them, get them into church, talking to them out in the community. Sometimes we're around people so much and so often that we think very little of it. We say, oh, you're a good person. They may never go to church. They may not even know the Lord. We're living in that day and time. But uh, <clears throat> it's something that Mike, they're putting on over at Stickle Baptist Church. If anybody's interested in that, I'll not be able to attend. I done told him that. I said if I could, I would go to the training on October 22nd. I feel like I have a pretty good ability to speak to people. Uh, but I wouldn't care to go to it. I mean, I'll walk up and talk to anybody. It don't bother me. <laughs> But uh, if anybody would like to go over there tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, check that out. I know Mike would really appreciate that. Does anybody have anything on their heart? Any announcements, any testimonies, or anything like that? I just want to say I'm thankful for the teachings, not just for me, but for my children. Um, last Sunday, Deacon went, oh, you know, he's talking about the Israelites. How they put blood on the door. It protected them. Oh, he the lamb. My, my. And I know what a blessing. That's wonderful. Ain't that wonderful? Amen. Wonderful. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for that. My children still pull it up. Amen. That's so awesome.
was so encouraging about about them children learning in Sunday school. Ain't that blessing? Pray for our Sunday school teachers. <clears throat> That's awesome. I really bless me about that. Anybody else tonight? Been good to be here. Sunday morning is our homecoming service. I'm looking forward to it. Excited about it. The uh, Parsons family, Brother David Mason, will be here with us. Well, I reckon we're having a big dinner, right? Big dinner? Praise God. That's something shout about right there, right? Amen. Uh -huh. hey, Won't that be wonderful? Well, if nobody's got anything else. I know there's something else, because my mind keeps saying that there's something I'm forgetting. But. I talked to Gary about that a while back. Gary said he was all right with not having it. But I'll tell you what, I never talked to none of the rest of the teachers. And I just don't really know. I mean, just start at 10.30, not half Sunday school. I like was send out a call a while or tell them or something. Huh? With young, all right. Our Matt, right there. What do you like, Matt? <laughs> we'll start at ten thirty. Huh? So we don't have church on ten thirty. Is that what you're saying? I'd say. I mean, if we're not going to have Sunday school, I, I don't think there's no reason to get here at ten, are there? I don't know. You get people out of a routine. <laughs> well, we'll start sometime. <laughs> I figure just get in here and go to high mate. I'll be following that. I ain't worried about it. I don't care if we have Sunday school. Don't mind me. We had Sunday school like we did Sunday morning. We probably ought to hide today. Don't you think? Gary, are you prepared or not prepared? You just planning on not? Yeah. Um, years ago, it was a, I don't know, a long time ago, we had the singing star, you know, our choir, and sing at 10. So everybody here at 10, but no one went back to the Sunday school class. Yeah, we'll have something. We'll figure something out. Right. Like. We'll just do it like that. We're just going to come to regular time. Well, uh, the music are singing, and it doesn't get the boosting off that long. Yeah, we'll just come to regular time. Just this I have meetings all I know. I don't I don't worry about stuff like that, though old what time and all that. Just go to meetings what I worry about. Follow the Lord, mind the Lord, you know. Hey man, we'll just come and have a good time. No Sunday school. We'll tell Miss Katie. We got any other teachers we need to tell? With all the rest of them here we got. I'll tell Jessica. Jessica, is she a teacher? She's just a little bit. Jessica does. She's got her eyes. Oh, and the little bitties. Yeah, I've been hearing them in there. Little bitty. We got Katie. We need to tell Tammy. Okay. 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 We need to tell Katie. We'll tell them. We'll just go back there and tell them. Oh. Yeah. Years burning. Are they down back there? We ain't going to have Sunday school Sunday morning. Come in more or less, go to meet and just have church. Okay, at 10? Yeah, at 10. Okay. Yeah. You I tell everybody? Oh, it? Oh, we're counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't find out, it's Aaron's fault. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. God bless you. We pray you much. We've been having some wonderful services. That's one of the devils. Go to fight, amen.